Right, I'm going to show you now just an amazing little uh, process I went through with Arduino and why it's just so amazingly good. It enabled me to fix a problem that was created in my complicated sub by something that went wrong. What does all that mean? I'm going to explain it now, but I have to begin by talking to you about what the problem was and then I'll talk to you about the Arduino and the code and how it fixed it. Okay? Problem was this. This is my ballast tank. Inside the ballast tank is a piston. At the back of the ballast tank here, there's an impeller pump, which pumps water in and out. And at the top, there's a breather tube. And the breather tube goes down to a valve. And from there, it goes up to the mast. You all see that? Great. So what happens is this. I pump water in, air bubbles out through here and comes out through there. Nice little uh, valve here. I've got a whole video explaining how to build this. I made it myself. It's really good. When water is pumped out of here, it sucks air in, but it sucks it through the mast because of the valve. When the pump is turned off, water can flow through it, but it doesn't because it would have to develop the pressure to lift a ball bearing off a seat in, this valve, in that valve, which it doesn't do, it doesn't have the capacity, so the boat stays on the surface. See, this valve is really quite good in this model. Now the piston, imagine the ballast tank is full, piston pushes this way, just pushes water out past the, past the impeller comes back, sucks water in, sucks it in through the impeller. Okay, problem. My lovely uh, pump here uh, just died. And it's a subtech pump. It's a two-way impeller, impeller pump, as I just said, which means it's not easy to replace. So I had already in the boat another option. And that option was a pump that I'd put into it to squirt water out of a gun. And that sits over here. Now, let me just draw it here. That, that's a, a gear pump. And it's not as efficient as that one. But it doesn't have water flowing through it as easily. It does. It does leak, but not significantly. So, very easily, I just plug that in to the bottom of this. Now, what does that mean? When I pump water in, air comes out, bubbles away, just like normal. Pump water out sucks it in, that's all good, not a problem. Piston, so imagine now this is full of water. When the piston pushes forward to push water out, it doesn't get much through this gear pump. Instead, it pushes it out through the, where the air would normally come out on that valve. But, and here's my problem, when I try to go back, it sucks back. Now, if this mast is above the water, it'll suck air in. And it'll suck air in and the boat won't move, it won't get heavier, until I turn the pump on and fill the tank up again. You follow me on that? So I turn the piston on to go down and nothing happens. If the boat's underwater and the mast is um, underwater, it just sucks air in, uh, water into the system so it's fine. So I've got a problem adjusting the piston, making the boat heavier when it's on the surface. What would work really well would be if when I pulled the piston back, the pump ran as well. That would fix it. Very complicated, but not really all that complicated with Arduino. So, let's start with Arduino. Okay, this is the controller that I use on my transmitter to control the um, piston and the pump. The way it works is this. This control, this goes to the receiver in the boat, and the receiver goes into the Arduino, and the Arduino reads this channel. And what the Arduino sees is that when, the, when that, uh, when that uh, lever is in the middle, it's reading a number, and the number is close enough to 1500. 1500 what? I have no idea, but that's, that's what it does. When I move this lever all the way across here, it goes to 1000. When I move it all the way across here, it goes to 2,000. So it's got a 1,000 
band that it goes from 1 to 2 and neutral is 15. So, what does all that mean? In the code, I therefore said to the Arduino, listen, when this little band here, when you're reading this little band here, turn the pump on to dive. And when you're reading this little bit here, turn the pump on to surface. That's the main pump. But when you're reading this little bit here, turn the piston on to dive. And when you're reading this little bit here, turn the piston on to surface. Now, what that does is it sends just a, a positive or a negative charge. Well, it's actually earths. It's a negative charge. It means it, it sets a pin either high or low on the Arduino. In this particular case, with the relays I've got, they're all constantly on high. They've all got current going into them, not going anywhere. But when I earth it, it throws the switch. Neither here nor there, really. Could be either way. So, that's how I control four relays on, the, on, the, uh, on that panel. Alright, now, the other thing that I've done is I've also said to, the, um, uh, said to the Arduino, if this, if it goes up this far, twice in 0.8 of a second, in other words, a double click, do the diving routine, and conversely do the surfing, surfacing routine, over, uh, only there's a difference on this side. With the surfacing routine, it sets up two separate routines. The first one is fairly short. It um, pushes the piston forward to make the boat lighter and it pumps water to the stern for a little while. And that causes the boat to come to the surface bow up. And that's the end of that one. That's what that one does. But this one is a bit different because what I've said to the Arduino is something different here. Now, I have a pressure gauge that sits in the water. Pressure gauge with an end like that. You've seen that on my little diagram. I think it's something to do with water tension. You have to have a, a fair bit of area on that. And it goes round the back of a little tube that's sealed. And there's the, there's the pressure gauge and the wires come out and go to the Arduino. Now, don't need that. So the Arduino is reading the pressure gauge all the time. Now, if this is the pressure gauge here, when the Arduino is reading a number like 600, uh, what these units mean, I have absolutely no idea and I don't care. That means it's really on the surface. 600 and less is on the surface. 600 down is submerged. Now, <clears throat> what I've done with this is I've said to this second surfacing routine, don't turn on until this becomes less than 600. When it becomes less than 600, it turns a pump on. Okay, that's, that's pretty, pretty smart. I like that. So you've got two different uh, routines for surfacing the boat. The other thing it does, as you're probably aware, is that when I use, uh, when I flick the sixth channel switch, it takes a snapshot and stores it. Maybe we're at 800. It just remembers that. And when I put it on automatic, immediately the bow hydroplane will respond either by going up or down to get it to that 800 depth. And the other little thing is that if it's, I think it's um, 20 or 30 units, whatever it is, uh, shallower or deeper than that 800, uh, the piston will come on for a second every eight seconds just to get it right. So it's, it's just like a very nice controlling process. Let's leave all that out for a minute. And let's come back to my problem, which is the pump on the surface. So, what I want to do is I want to say, when the piston goes back, make the piston work just as normal. But I want a special control algorithm, if you like, to go to the pump. So what I'm going to say to the pump is, if you get this reading, which is right at the end of the travel, 
which would always which is turning the piston on if you get that reading and if this is less than 600 turn the piston on turn turn the pump on which means that when the boat's on the surface and I turn the piston on both the pump and the piston come on but when the boat is deeper than that that won't happen now I have now made changes to my code and you will see me now putting that into the Arduino and then we shall test it and this is really exciting because I've got three cameras on it. Okay, let's go.